Well, back in the mid-70s, we had that influx of Vietnamese refugees who came here by boat and we took them in and we saw probably a few years later the emergence of a lot of Vietnamese crime gangs, triads, who began working into crime networks, uh, drug trafficking here in Australia. Uh, 80s and 90s, we saw uh, the rise of Lebanese gangs um, after that last wave in the 70s. So we've seen a lot of generational change, uh, particularly with migrant intakes linked to crime, but have we ever seen anything like we're seeing now with some younger members of the Islamic community? Well, what's interesting here is that you, all those groups you've described, they used a, an ethnic identification uh, to form into a gang, but it was for a criminal enterprise. Uh, the, uh, the the Vietnamese gangs, you talk about the Italian mafia, you talk about the you know the, the Lebanese that got involved with these bikey gangs. The bikey gangs aren't out aren't getting together because they want to ride bikes or wear colours or tats. They're, they're involved in criminal enterprises. Now, this, this group that's uh, hooked up with some sort of perverted version of Islam that's identifying with the Islamic radicals overseas, uh, they're twinning that with worshipping uh, the character in Scarface uh, of Al Pacino, which makes no sense when you think about hardline Islam, which talks about no drinking and, and, and covering up and women, you know, cha taking women uh, out of schools, all of that. How does that fit in with uh, drug running and the sort of stuff that uh, you well, saw it, in Scarface? It, it makes no sense. And it doesn't. And the Prime Minister has announced today the a grant of about $13.5 million to go towards de-radicalising some of these people who are on the edge of becoming homegrown terrorists. Where do you start? I mean, to me, that's a failure in the home for a start because these kids are hearing this mixed message. They want to be sons of Hezbollah. They want to fight the jihad and, and crusade both overseas and, and here. Where are they getting that from? They're getting it from their local community and in their local home. Yeah, and look, I, I think uh, how this de-radicalisation will work... One thing's got to be education. You've got to empower people so they've got other things to do. If they if they feel and and this is another thing we you know we, you and I might differ on this, but the word inclusion sounds very soft and woolly. But it is about trying to make people feel like they are part of the society. If you keep telling people well, you're not part of Australia, you don't belong here, of course they're going to feel as though they're not but part of it, and they're going, are they it's made going to become to, self fulfilling. When are these kids not made to feel welcome? I think this well, is the most welcoming community well, in the world. You don't know that because if you've got people saying, oh, they, they don't fit in, they don't fit in, they, they get it in the playground, they immediately start to but feel like But they don't not because part. most of these kids go to schools with which have a huge multicultural background. It's not. It's not other people forcing, um, yeah, saying you're, you're going to be like us in yeah, Australia. You're, you're not talking about huge numbers. You're talking about small numbers who feel like they're excluded, and I think that's a big issue. I think talking about how they're different and shouldn't be here, I think just perpetuates and reinforces the sense of exclusion they feel, which is why they go involved in these. I games. just, I just think spending millions of dollars on a what a, a marketing campaign that says Muhammad, you know, don't be radicalised. You know, stay true to Australia and our values, is that going to make any difference whatsoever? Let's wait and see.